Okay, welcome to Let's Get to the Marks. Today we're looking at the AQA A-Level Biology Paper 1, 2023, question 3. Make sure you pause the video and have a go at the question, then follow the walkthrough to mark your work. So 3.1, the human disease malaria is caused by infection with a single-celled eukaryote organism. Figure 2 shows a diagram of the Plasmodium vivax, one of the species that can cause malaria. Structures containing enzymes that allow P. vivax to enter human cells. Other than the Golgi apparatus, name one structure in figure two which shows the P. vivax is a eukaryote. You can see the Golgi apparatus here. So some of the structures you would only find in eukaryote like mitochondria here. So mitochondria. It's got a double membrane or an envelope with cristae on it. Then we've got the nucleus, which has a nuclear envelope. So another double membrane bound organelle. Any double membrane bound organelle you can see in this diagram. We've also got the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is not double membrane bound, but not found in prokaryotes. So only found in eukaryotes. Now, some people might make the mistake of saying smooth endoplasmic reticulum. That will not get you a mark because that is not shown in figure two. And the question specifically asks something that is shown in figure two. You would only find smooth endoplasmic reticulum in a eukaryote, but it's not shown here. So that's not one of the possible answers. Now, you do find ribosomes that I've circled here. You do find those found in both uh, prokaryote and eukaryote, but specifically these are ATS ribosomes. So that will get you the mark as well but just no smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, some people get the Golgi apparatus mixed up with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They have a slightly different shape. The Golgi apparatus is more C-shaped and you will have little vesicles arriving and budding off of the Golgi apparatus. So 3.2, describe two functions of the Golgi apparatus in a eukaryotic cell. So we can see here they produce vesicles for transport. Of course, things go to and from the Golgi apparatus. I'm circling here. They go to the membrane for exocytosis, etc. Um, it's also the site of packaging. Oops, I put packaging and modification of proteins. So packaging or modifying proteins. This can be adding a glucose molecule to make a glycolipid um, or a lipid to make a lipoprotein. There's all sorts of things we can do, but they also used for modifying lipids. We could make a glycolipid. Um, so by adding a glucose to a lipid. Okay, so we can stick things and modify fats, lipids, or proteins here. It's for packaging and modifying those. Also for producing vesicles for transport. All right, let's move on to 3.3, which is the next part of this question. So... So here's the stem. P. vivax evolved from a common ancestor in Africa. As humans migrated around the world, new strains of P. vivax evolved. P. vivax is now extremely rare in Africa, but there are several different strains of P. vivax in other parts of the world. Figure three shows a phylogenetic, or phylogenetic diagram of the evolution of these different strains. So you can see there's common ancestors at every point on here. And the question 3.3 says, what does figure three suggest about the order of human migration out of Africa? Well, if we look at the African um, common ancestor there, which is now extinct, go to the nearest point and write one. That is the closest um, ancestor to the common African ancestor. Where's the next nearest point? It's over here, two, and that's the European stain, then three, the... Um, Indian strain, then four, the South, Central American, and then five finally is the South American strain. So these phylogenetic trees or diagrams can show you how closely related things are. So follow the numbers I've written and it will go India, Europe, East Asia, Central America, and South America. And there we go. That's your mark. Let's move on to 3.4. Now 3.4 is a calculation. So there are an estimated 229 whoops, million cases of human malaria worldwide per year. 94% of these cases are found in Africa, but are not caused by P. vivax. P. vivax does cause 61% of the cases of human malaria outside Africa. Use this information to calculate the number of cases worldwide caused by P. vivax every year. You can see I'm underlining key points. You can use a highlighter if you like. 
it's just good exam practice to get in the habit of highlighting, circling key information. That way, when you're in an exam, you it may stop you from missing something really important. Even if when you first start doing it, you highlight loads of useless information, at least it helps. Right, 94% in Africa is not caused by P. Vivax. Um, so that means 94% of the 229 million cases worldwide are not caused by V. Vivax because they're the African ones. So we're going to go 100 take away 94 is 6%. Only 6% of the total can possibly be caused by P. Vivax. So we go 0.06 times 229, or if you like, 229 divided by 100 times 6. And this equals 13.74 million. Now, it told us those are the amount of cases that happen outside Africa that could be caused by P. Vivax. But we were told that only 61% of these were caused by P. Vivax. So now do 0.61 times 13.74, and you're going to get something like 8.38 million. Round it down to one decimal place to um, 8.4 million. And that's your number of cases of malaria. Or somnus. We're nearly through. We've got a four mark question now on natural selection. So, 3.5. In Africa today, most of the human population are resistant to malaria caused by the P. vivax. Use your knowledge of natural selection to explain why this resistance is so common in Africa. So, back in GCSE, this four marker would have been a mutation causes a change in a gene, uh, makes you more likely to survive, reproduce, pass the gene on to the offspring. There's a slight difference at A level. We must use the word allele. So mutation causes a change in a gene which produces an allele, which makes people more resistant to malaria. We do the whole more likely to survive because they won't catch malaria, pass on this allele to their offspring, reproduce and pass on to their offspring. And then we need to finish with the A level will increase the frequency of the allele in the population. So that's the kind of difference between the GCSE. We're using the word allele a lot, and we need to end by saying the frequency of the allele is increased in the population. So you do the whole more likely to survive, more likely to mate successfully or reproduce or breed, produce offspring that contain the allele. At GCSE, you'd say this is repeated over many generations, which we can still say here, increasing the frequency of the allele in the population. And that's the end of question three. So I hope you did well. Um, bish bash bosh, I think that was an eight or nine marker. So there we go, all done. Subscribe, share and like helps me with the channel. Let's get to the marks. You're still here? It's over.